And uh, what about the long-term effects of the radiation for Japan and the neighboring countries? Well, in health terms, it's very unlikely that anybody is going to uh, suffer any direct health effect uh, from this. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, let's debunk RT one more time. And this is straight from the NRC for you documents pertaining to Fukushima. Uh, where Chairman Jacksco, Jim Wiggins, and an unknown male participant are having a conversation here. And Jim Wiggins says, what's the, what's the president's case? Male participant responds, it's, it's bounding. It includes the, the fuel in the three reactors, the fuel in the four spent fuel pools. It does not include the common spent fuel pool around Unit 4, nor reactors 5 and 6, or any spent fuel pools there and it's assumed a release over a four to five day period. Okay, what's important there? The president's case, they're talking about the president's modeling of the plume and fallout and the results, the real-time effects of Fukushima. They're wanting to model the source terms and the fallout from Fukushima. And that's what this president's model is, and it's, as you can tell, it sounds pretty serious. Now, four to five days of emanations, that's kind of bunk. We know it's 800-something days and ongoing. But that gives you an idea the president is modeling a worst case scenario. They know it's really bad, really bad. Okay, this next one, what's important to look at down here at the bottom, Jim Wiggins says the PAR looks good, and we'll let you know what these NARAC, and they do modeling, NARAC, what these NARAC, what the president's run results in in California, Hawaii, and those places. We'll make sure you know that. So what you can see from this one is they're modeling as far away as California, Hawaii. They know this plume's going to come. They know the fallout's going to come. They know from Chernobyl we have the Pacific jet stream coming this way. So it's patently absurd to say no one's going to suffer any health effects. And we're going to check health effects in just a second. This next screen capture right here from Linda Howell on the 16th. Let me just read the important part to you. It says, Unit 4 situation is deteriorating. Spent fuel pool water inventory is lost. Japanese military had planned to drop seawater over Unit 3 and probably Unit 4 yesterday, but this plan was abandoned due to high dose rates. The dose rates around Unit 4 make entry impossible at this time, and it talks about dose concerns after that. But critical for you to know that that's how serious it was. No water and spent fuel pool number 4. You know, dose rates so high they can't even go into drop seawater and in the FOIA documents NRC does not speak very highly of the helicopter drops or the water cannon concrete truck pumpers they say it's, it's virtually ineffective next screen capture real quick I just want to read you this one uh, where I believe they talk about worst case um, scenario and this is from Tom Andrews on the 14th and he says I'll read the highlighted part sad to say but this sounds like one of those quote unquote worst case scenarios we have practiced for years parentheses prolonged station blackout okay and that's what's important there prolonged station blackout just showing you they know how bad it is and worst case scenario prolonged station blackout I want you to give you an idea of the seriousness and then we're going to talk about health effects this won't take long next screen capture Margie Kozalas and this screen captures a really awesome one right here. It gives you great insight as into even with the redaction, okay? It still shows you. I'll read the important part that's highlighted. I couldn't sleep again last night. Michelle was doing a shift in the ops center, protective measures team, last night. She texted me, quote, U2X vessel, U4, <clears throat> excuse me, Zerk fire, SFP catastrophe. U2, let me repeat that quote, U2, Unit 2, X vessel, that means containment out, out of the vessel, Unit 4, Zerk fire, spent fuel pool, catastrophe. In other words, that uh, pool has caught fire. And, I mean, what can I say? The first one says there's no water in it, water's lost. This one says it's caught fire, Zerk fire, catastrophe. And then it says outside of scope, there's two block redaction sections. You, again, go figure out what's in there for yourself. We kind of already know. It's really, really serious. Okay, next screen capture. Now let's talk about their modeling of doses to children. Mr. Zimmerman, yes, and just to throw a value at you to let you know why the concern is so high is that that Transamerica model guy from Scott Out is talking four and a half rims is a thyroid for infants in California. Chairman Jacksco, right. Okay, so we're talking about four, and again, these are usually modeled on like four to five days. They're very conservative. 
Next screen capture, here's one I recently did a video on. I'll read the highlighted important section. PMT, Protective Measures Team, identified need to update the source term for modeling. A Melkor Transpacific model needs to be worked. Shows about 4.5 rem iodine to children. Interagency agreed on a model last night. We have requested NARAC to make changes showing 70% core damage versus the 33 damage assumed previously. We are trying to ensure that the over-conservatism errors in the 4.5 rem does not get issued. Okay, in other words, they've been very conservative thus far in their modeling. And even with that conservative modeling, they're showing 4.5 rem iodine to children. That's a trans-Pacific across the Pacific. And that rings true with the one we just talked about in the previous screen capture, about 4.5 rims to children in California. Okay, so we're now we're talking about real-time modeling of doses and effects to children in America. Okay, next screen capture. I'll read the highlighted section. He says, in Alaska, up to 35 FAR rim for a one-year-old child projected thyroid dose. And that's for a northeast wind. And also up to 6.4 in Alaska for the thyroid dose for the one year old for an eastern wind. And in Midway, if the winds are from or to the east, would show a dose up to 4.9 rims to the thyroid for a one year old child. Okay, that's what's important to understand. And even though some of these they know they might not be entirely accurate, we're seeing some real numbers you can sink your teeth into and look at these numbers, and they're very conservative. Again, the, mo the best about the one we just looked at was where they say it's a real conservative estimate. Yes, they're modeling on just a few number of days of emanations. We're 800 plus days in, it's still going. Leaking into Pacific, steam coming out the ground, it's never stopped. It's never stopped. Okay, now I have to show you this is screen capture right from the US NRC website dose equivalent to an M embryo fetus is 0.5 rem. 0.5 rem if you work at a nuclear power facility and you're a pregnant woman and you receive 0.5 rem, they send you home. You cannot get more than that. And so if you look at these doses, 4.5, 35, 4.9, 6 point whatever, you can see that if a pregnant woman is in the rain or gets affected by this, this is very serious. And the, the unborn child is developing cells at a higher rate. They're, they're very susceptible. This is really serious when you get any rainwater warning when France did, okay, and they're farther away than us. Okay, my next screen capture really quickly, I'll try to read you the important section, and this is from a fatality index study from Mongomino and Sherman, and this was updated later to reflect even more deaths, but they will read you the first number and then I'll give you the second updated number. And it says, U.S. health officials report weekly deaths by age in 122 cities. About 25 to 35% of the national total. Deaths rose 4.46% from 2010 to 2011 in the 14 weeks after the arrival of Japanese fallout, compared with a 2.34% increase in the prior 14 weeks. The number of infant deaths after Fukushima rose 1.80% compared with a previous 8.37% decrease. Projecting these figures for the entire United States yields 13,983 total deaths and 822 infant deaths in excess of the expected. And this rings true with the Chernobyl study as well. And I have a video titled Body Count Fatality Index Study Review or Analysis of Fatality Index Studies. And you really, I'll link to that when you guys need to look into that if you haven't seen it already. Okay, next screen capture real quick is from Sherman Mangano. Elevated airborne beta levels in Pacific slash West Coast. U.S. states and trends in hypothyroidism among newborns after Fukushima nuclear meltdown. Let me read you the critical section. It says, just days after the meltdowns, iodine-131 concentrations in U.S. precipitation was measured up to 211 times above normal. Highest levels of I-131 and airborne gross beta were documented in the five U.S. states on the Pacific Ocean. The number of congenital hypothyroid cases in these five states from March 17 to December 31, 2011 was 16% greater than for the same period in 2010, compared to a 3% decline in 36 other U.S. states. The greatest divergence in these two groups, plus 28%, occurred in the period March 17 to June 30. Okay, that's critical. Right after Plume's arrival, we got blasted. What can I say? And the next clip is from Bobby One, who's an excellent top-notch researcher. 
Okay, and here's his fatality index study, which is more in depth. And he's like I say, he's he's excellent because he won't include an area if he doesn't have all the data. So this would be conservative, very conservative, but better to err on the side of being conservative than to post crazy numbers. But keep in mind when I say by the year 2031, there'll be 1.3 million cumulative deaths in the U.S. This is an estimate, but again, I would look to you and say, this is going to be a conservative estimate. Just like in Chernobyl, we know they say not very many people died. Well, there's estimates uh, that are on file in New York Annals of Science that are 900 plus thousand from very reliable Nestorinko uh, Yablokov study. And then now we have these reports coming in on, from Fukushima. So this guy on RT to say that there'll be no ill health effects to speak of. And for RT furthermore to continue to promote this kind of bogus propaganda, they, they for me RT has lost all credibility. It's very unlikely that anybody is going to uh, suffer any direct health effect. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video. And, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.